This might get weird. We moving and grooving. We're moving and we're grooving. Oh, uh, baby, baby. Oh, heck yeah. Hey, Grace Helbig. Hey, cheers. Hey, my heart. Cheers. How you doing, love? Um, I've never I'm, called you love. I know. I'm like, <laughs> Jesus. It's a weird Monday already. You know, we're recording on Monday instead of Tuesday, so I'm not warmed up yet. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm um, I'm 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 haggard. I'm I'm, 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 I'm uh, doing a little bit of Looney Tunes and um, mm-hmm. yeah, sloppy tunes. I hung out with the one and only Mitchell Davis last night. Is that why you're haggard? Yeah. Well, okay. I hung out with Elliot and Mitchell, and it was a really fun friend hang. And then we just fucking tied one on. Cut really? to two a.m. I learned that Elliot knows how to juggle. Oh my god! And he's like, did you? I, he's like, I forgot I know how to juggle. He's like, I think I have my rings. Walks into Wait, his room. I think. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, let's take it back. I forgot I know how to juggle. Let me go get my rings. Yes, that's back okay. to back. And then he, but he, he played coy. Like, I think I might have my rings still. And then. It took him less than five seconds to come back out of his bedroom with three okay. colorful. They're called like um, like actual circus rings or Hold something. Hold on. Okay. That at least makes me feel a little better. Because when you just <laughs> said that, I thought you meant he was at your house. No. Oh, and was God. Like, I think I oh, have my rings. <laughs> and like went into either his car trunk or he had already placed them in his like one drawer had, you give him. Yeah. He had already so, like secretly placed I mean, them just waiting for the opportunity for them to emerge. No. We were at his apartment. It. And then he came out and yeah, he can juggle. And I was just like really drunk. And I was like, I can't tell if I'm attracted to this or not. This is yes. a, this is I'm proud of you for having a, um, a party trick. But I don't know if this turns the um, vagina meter for me at all. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily a turn on or a turn off. It's a yeah. very neutral skill. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Elliot Morgan. I mean, it made but me like sexually. It's a neutral skill. Yes. It made me want to learn how to do it just for my own like pastime it's like um it's more impressive fidget spinning basically mm. it seems like it's a tool to kind of relax your brain uh but what? it made me start thinking about i wanted to ask you if you've ever had a guy do any sort of dumb thing like that to impress you i don't think so i mean hmm. and it to be fair he wasn't trying to impress me he was just trying to remember that he knew was how to joke at it though I mean, at the inebriated state that he was in, very good. Did he, has he said what the most impressive he thing he can juggle? Like, can knives. he juggle? He used to Fuck juggle off. knives. Are you serious? Yeah, but I'm like, if you are struggling with these plastic rings, maybe get some practice in before you show off the Actual knives. Actual sharpened knives. Supposedly. Supposedly. Okay, as someone who is so into hibachi. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a boyfriend juggling knives then could real could be attractive. Right. That um he was talking the other day about how uh he doesn't have like a backup plan and he's like, Should I have like a another like dream, like a, a thing outside of entertainment? <laughs> I don't have one of those yet. And now he does. He can be a hibachi chef if wow. he needs to be. Yeah. The only thing that came close, I was thinking about it this morning that's ever happened in the past was I remember my college boyfriend, the first night we hung out, I went to his birthday party on campus and we got really drunk. Then we went back to his room and then he pulled out a guitar. Oh and, God, that and is I, the... <laughs> and I okay, just, yeah. I politely like let him play for like 10 seconds and then I like put my hand on the guitar and was like, I'm not that kind of girl. No, you don't need to do you this. Don't, oh, <laughs> now that you've said that, my memory is jogged. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, yeah. One time, like back in the day in New York, I remember I was at, uh, a guy's house uh, you know very casually hung out a few times uh-huh. and from the other room I hear an acoustic guitar coming towards me <laughs> strumming and it's this and it's more than words so it's <laughs> say that I love you. and I'm like oh and it's approaching like the Jaws theme <laughs> yeah exactly it's getting closer as as it approaches the vagina is getting drier to the point where <laughs> Where when this person enters the room, I have got a crotch full yeah. of dust. Yeah, you got sandpaper down there. You just got a, a refinished just a dresser. Sphinx. Not a pussy, a sphinx. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I just it was so funny. No, I, but I love a skill coming out late at night like I that. I love. I mean, that's I love. It's a the definition of a party trick. We it were truly having is. a party, and then he realized he could do a trick. 
Can you like juggle scarves or anything? I think I can do scarves. I remember we did that in gym class when I was in like elementary school. Just because dancing to Cotton Eye Joe and, and juggling scarves. You guys were I really go to in shape. School <laughs> yeah. Without knowing it. Did you were you actually an adopted <laughs> I don't know. Russian uh, girl? We, we all had diabetes, but we could really turn up at a party. <laughs> Get it. Get it. Oh God. There was always the best well. I love scooting and playing crab soccer. <laughs> and do you, do you remember when crab soccer was a thing? Yes, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, why Why are you trying to damage all our joints at such a young age? That they're like, we're not going to let you guys run around and burn off energy and play regular soccer. No. Instead, you guys put your hands behind, behind your you. back, <laughs> squat down and play soccer like a bunch of crabs. <laughs> In hindsight... Uh, like elementary and middle school gym curriculum yeah. is all over the fucking place. It's all over the place. I also had, okay, I had this gym teacher, Coach Luffman, uh -huh. who always played with his balls. <laughs> <laughs> like I wasn't aware what was even down there for most of it, but then you hit like fifth or sixth grade and all the girls were like, he touches his balls a lot. <laughs> Yeah, he's like those um uh, those oh, yeah, Asian, the, the Asian balls that are supposed to relax your palms. <laughs> well, like, they're not. No, medicine balls is what you do crunches on. But yeah, the relaxation yeah. meditation balls. You um, just like squirrel around in your hand. That were in every like <laughs> new age store in the mall. <laughs> Oh, boating balls. Boating balls? I guess so. Boating balls are metal balls small enough to hold in one hand. They're also known as Chinese balls for ball practice exercise. Balls for ball practice. <laughs> yeah. You swirl them around. Yes. He would Chinese, he would boating balls his balls <laughs> while, while we're on our hands and knees playing crab soccer. Um, but oh. I feel like he made up a lot of games. Oh, and, you really? know, it's kind of like, you know, folklore when you're younger and you're like, you know, this story, uh, like, and then you, you tell someone else and they're like, that's not a thing. Mm hmm. Uh, I feel it's the same way with the games we played there. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. And they were always games that had to do with hitting each other with foam balls. <laughs> yes, yes. It was always very... <laughs> my we... favorite game, I think he made up. So uh -huh. listeners, if this was a thing in your, G your PE class, let me know. He made up a game called Prisoner Ball. <laughs> <laughs> we played Medic. Wait, what's medic? This might be the same Did thing. Did you do mouth to mouth? This is getting no, weird. No, 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 okay, no. Okay, okay. Describe prisoner ball. Prisoner ball. <laughs> it was it was basically a different version of dodgeball. So yeah. you had like the prison you had to go to yes. and the people. And then if you if like your phone ball went in the other person's like it might have been like make a basket from half court or something. Oh. Then your prisoners got released and got to come back to you. Oh, yeah. We so medic is kind of the same. It's like <laughs> there's I know I like all these like uh, regional variations of just hitting yeah. each other with a ball, and it's basically dodgeball. But you have one medic that's on one of those like <gasps> flat lunch boards with the uh, wheels on them. You know those four wheel yeah, totally. little scooter yes, things. Yes, we played lots of games on that. Yeah, and so one oh, medic is that in the, the back. ambulance. Yeah, that, they're in the back on those scooters, <laughs> and you basically throw balls at each other and if you get hit you have to go to the back line and the medic has to scoot over and tap you and get you back in the game <laughs> it's, it's almost uh, like indicative of like war but on some like totally really stupid pe were there like, people who game. really wanted to be the medic oh my god all the time we had one kid that would get on the little scooter thing on his stomach and just like <laughs> army <crawl laughs> He was a warrior. He was. And it was, and you know, it's always the kid that can't that, run the mile. That, that, you know? that kid now has a purple heart. Yeah. But it's like a kid that's clearly going to be like an IT in, for the rest of his life. But this is the one non real athletic sport that he excelled at. And he took it upon himself to really. He's like, be a I medic. can scoot, goddammit. Yeah. And he never got I'm not going to do the long jump very well for the presidential fitness award i can't do sit and reach but i will heal all of my soldiers oh god yeah P -E. oh, what so a fun. time but that's hilarious that you learn to <sighs> juggle in pe yeah and we also have parachute was another yeah where you have a big parachute and you just lift it up and put it behind you yep, and you yep. all enjoy the parachute <laughs> for two seconds and that's about it that's it um i loved that day though oh uh, me too like that was my kind of sports is just watching a beautiful rainbow parachute above us yeah and then that's it that's your whole that, curriculum that's it you just see it mushroom cloud for a second <laughs> and that's it you're done uh how so was your weekend funny. fuck i'm crying about that guy <laughs> the medic on his stomach oh he loved it i forget his name zach or ryan something like that <laughs> they're always a zach or ryan mm -hmm. um let me see let me pull up my notes well you had a 
One, I, we recorded a live stream yes, um, on Saturday morning. And you told me in the most ominous way possible <laughs> that you were going to go have an adventure that you couldn't actually tell me about because you wanted to save it for the podcast. Yes. Well, OK. I was going to have an adventure with my friend Melissa, a.k.a. Ruckasaurus, uh-huh. a.k.a. the, you know, my favorite crazy friend. She rules. She's the best. So she was going to be back in town. She's been on the road working on movies forever. And I was like, let's do something fun. She loves dance. We love yeah. going to dance classes. So I found like a kid's dance competition we were going to go to in like Orange County. Uh-huh. So that was the plan the whole day. Then she was going to go t- downtown to have brunch with friends while we live streamed. So then I just looked up like what's happening in downtown L.A. Yeah. You know, let's not like commit ourselves to drive an yeah, hour. There's both something ways. better closer. And then I saw there was a pole dancing competition. <laughs> I saw small snippets on your story. I didn't even know that was a thing, but it completely makes sense because it's so athletic. And there's so many actual like fitness classes that teach pole dancing. Exactly. This wasn't when I say pole dancing competition, it wasn't like all the greatest strippers combining, (laughs) which I'm sure they have. Yeah, I bet that exists. I think none of these women were actual strippers. Oh, okay. Like it was people who do it for sport and take classes like like dance classes wow yeah like there were studios it was a full-on like dance mom style whoa studios clustered in the audience (gasps) cheering for their other dancers oh shit was there one clear like standout studio like abby lee miller's dance company no they did get progressively louder during the day okay (laughs) (laughs) and and granted these were all i'm thinking adult women like i don't think anyone's being like yeah my daughter's in pole dancing classes (laughs) Maybe, maybe we can relieve the stigma. Who knows? But so I'm like, there's a fucking pole dancing competition. This is going to be amazing. Oh, my God. So uh, we decide to do that instead. Melissa is brunching. I go ahead down there by myself. I'm like, take your time. I'm going to go down and check it out. So I get there and I get to the theater and I walk inside and it's full on. You know, the lobby is like merch. Yeah, yeah. Like there's different like uh, garters and pole dancing stuff and like athletic gear. Uh-huh. Later, Melissa and I would both buy shirts that say dance like you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great piece of merch. Dance like you fuck. Amazing. We wore them to get margaritas later. Perfect. Um, but I go in, I go to the sign in desk and I just don't know what the fucking vibe is going to be. Like at yeah. this point, I think it might be like Creepy. trashy, like creeps. Like, yeah, like. You know, not the creeps on our Patreon page, patreon.com yes. slash just make actual weird. creeps. And I get in there and I go to the check in booth and they're all disorganized. And, I'm, and I peek in and it looks like all athletic and like oh, people cool. like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, here we go. This yeah. will be a dance competition. This is my jam. And as I'm checking in, a woman rounds the corner who is either 65 <laughs> or 40 and has been doing meth for 20 years. <laughs> A, a small <laughs> troll of a woman with a limb comes in wearing full kinky boots. Oh. Like the red oh, boots. Oh, like the to, Broadway show the kinky Broadway boots. The Broadway show kinky boots. <laughs> the red lace up to the thigh. She's got on like, you know, little workout booty shorts, underwear, oh my a tank god. top, a knot on her head. She's limping on in with the kinky boots. Oh my god. And I'm like, oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> it looked like a labyrinth character. <laughs> had to pick up a shift and she she held her hand out at, to the woman behind the desk and i see the woman reach and give her a bottle of water and go this is the last one <laughs> hold on to your bottle and refill it with the water fountain no more and she just goes okay fine and le- like she's been like going and getting free waters all day and she was officially cut off it's like oh i love this vibe oh this is already perfect the relationships that are pre-existing uh, are wonderful the, dyna- the power dynamics of kinky boots oh my god so i get in there i sit down uh there's two poles on stage okay so that they can both work either pole it's a small theater is there like synchronized like no no it's eyes? only Singular. one, at, one okay. at a time however i don't know like I was only there a couple hours sure. and there were two days. So I'm in there and it's just an interesting crowd. I thought again, there would be more creeps like right. single dudes by themselves, but no, it's like all people coming to support their friends. I was the biggest creep. You were the creep. Yeah. I was a total. <laughs> she's not wearing any of the yes. like dance companies merch. No, um, it's and like when you herself. go to a dog park and they're yeah. like, which one's George? You're like, bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, scoop. Total creep. So I'm there and the first act comes out. And I'm like, oh, this will be fun because I heard upbeat music yeah. earlier. And it's to a very sad female cover of Wicked Games. <laughs> what? I don't even Those know that. Those Wicked Games you play. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. This is like lyrical dance, but with stripping. Oh, boy. Or not stripping, pole dancing. Yeah. So anyway, it's very dramatic. Yeah. It's like something that Maddie would do 
circa oh, from Abilene Dance, Dance, Dance Moms. Moms. Yeah. In her prime, pre Sia. Yeah. Um, but with also pole routines. So yeah, oh, oh, that's um, that's heavy. That, if that's the first one you see it's when you watch it, the first one I see, I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. So I'm like, maybe this will be a downer. They leave, and in between, here comes Kinky Boots <laughs> with a rag to climb up the pole and clean it all the way down. Move on to the other pole, scurry on up. She's the pole cleaner. She's the Zamboni. Of She's the, the pole. Zamboni. <laughs> Of the strip competition. Oh my God. I was trying not to laugh so hard, but I'm like, how long has this been woman? How long has this woman been cleaning the poles? And as she, as her thighs grip and she slides down, you know what it sounded like? Huh. The dolphins oh. from planet Earth. It was like squeak, 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 squeak. And she got in there. And when she got to the bottom oh. of the pole, she full on did not bend her legs. She just leaned all the way over. So her butt was wiggling as she gets to the bottom of the pole. Oh it my. was so fun it was like window washers that just slowly moving amazing. down amazing oh it killed me no wonder she needs that extra bottle of water she's putting in some work right i mean like <laughs> give the woman the agua yeah she doesn't have the most um glamorous job in this competition no, she's cleaning poles <laughs> she's cleaning thigh sweat from other women off of a metal fireman's pole oh god it was so i mean and she really took her job seriously like oh, i yeah. would hire her to clean my home <laughs> I would require the boots to still be on. Oh, please. Yeah. Oh, clinging boots. That's amazing. So then I'm like, all right, maybe this will all be serious. And then I hear the kind of like rustle of a song, like a musical theater song that was clearly Uh recorded in the 50s, you know, with like sound effects and stuff. And out comes this woman dressed as a cat. (laughs) Oh, wait, is she doing cats? No, she's doing that darn cat. (laughs) That darn cat. And it's like full on like a 40s or 50s song with like sound effects of garbage cans. Like it's very confusing. She comes out. The music hasn't started really. She hasn't Uh started dancing. Licking her paws. Oh my God. She's at least 40. She's a grown ass woman. This is amazing. She does a routine. It's not as impressive as the previous one. Sure. But this is the junior to intermediate level. Okay. She's doing her thing. Everyone is like, she got through it. She got through yeah. it. She gets up and full on turns her ankle. <laughs> she's in like eight oh foot. She's in like eight foot heels. And you hear the whole audience go, ooh. <laughs> she did not nail the dismount. No, because I mean, half of the women did it barefoot. Half of them did it in sneakers. Right, that would be math. That would be a whole. Yeah. A third, a third. But then others would do it in the full... Full, heels, like w- seven inch heels, which is fine when you're <clears throat> dancing and doing your thing, but it's when they're just introducing you on and off oh stage when you're just taking three inch steps <laughs> yeah. that you're like, please welcome to the stage. And it takes 40 minutes oh, for them to get there. My God killed me. OK, so after that darn cat and wicked games, this girl comes out and she just fucking destroys. Really? Like her first move, she climbs up the pole. It's all it's all, you know, slow. Do you know that stripper move where they get to the top and then they just drop yeah 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 yeah. and then end like three inches from the bottom it's like those drop zone rides at six flags it's like tower of terror but uh your body on a pole if that move isn't called tower of terror (laughs) like she drops she's doing crazy shit everyone's freaking out i'm like this is fucking awesome like here we go i'm ready for this she finishes people lose her mind (laughs) as she leaves they're like please welcome to stage number blah 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 performing this and then a woman, a very sad woman, comes out with a baton. <laughs> oh, no. You can have accessories. <laughs> and then does the very, like, I could have pole danced. Like, oh, no. Which I was very happy for. Like, it yeah. beca- like she was smiling really hard. It yeah. became, I was like, maybe this is like a, a dream yeah. of her. You know, it's I don't think she's pursuing this. Yeah, this is like uh, her eat, pray, love. But journey she comes out she does a little baton spin uh-huh you know the, which would also be a great party trick late yeah. night to pull out a baton or, or my color guard rifle there you go. so she does a little baton trick then she starts dancing and then i'm like oh this is this is bad this is bad she could climb that pole like a goddamn <laughs> monkey that was her one strength so she can't really spin she's just kind of like leaning on the pole is like, she spinning the uh, baton while no, she's on she, the pole she did a little spin then she stuck it in her in her shorts oh my god that's then she climbed the pole like a jaguar going for a prey. Like all of a sudden it was like, are you possessed? Or like those great outdoor competitions where they yes, climb the trees. The logging thing. Yeah. She gets up there, gets to the top, pulls out the baton, uh-huh. spins it. Not very well. Then she does the death drop. 
I was like, where did this come from? You can't do a 360 on this pole, but you can death drop? Um, play to your strengths. Oh my God, play she's straight up dead zone. So anyway, it was so, so fun. That's Some so other song, um, I did see one guy competed. Oh, cool. And his name was No No. Perfect. His yes, name was yes. No No. That's what I said. <laughs> And he did toxic Britney Spears oh, and he did a lot yeah. of butt slapping. OK, his own butt, his own butt. OK, so he was great. But then we get kind of through it. Um, Melissa finally joins me. Uh-huh. Uh, one of my favorite things um, that I noticed is that there's a woman in the front row uh-huh. rocking a baby in a bassinet. <laughs> <laughs> like a full bassinet. <laughs> like, like the thing you click in as a car seat yeah. for a baby. She's there. <laughs> rocking it front row at a pole dancing competition. She is supporting whoever is in that competition that she knows no matter what. Love that. About an hour in on the PA system, uh-huh. in between acts, I hear, if anyone would like to volunteer as a pole cleaner, please see the front. <laughs> if anyone would like to volunteer, and I look to the wing and the kinky boots are off and she's rubbing her feet. <laughs> she was taking a little break. Oh. Oh she rested. God. They got some volunteer oh, ones. She came back out. But, but that's I was like, like hearing on a plane, like if there's a doctor on this flight, please hit your call button. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so after that, they announced the entertainment segment of the day. Wait, so that what? So this is what I learn okay. is that there's the one day that's artistic uh-huh. and the next day is sex day. <gasps> we were there on artistic entertainment day. Oh, wow. So. I saw a girl dressed as Snow White who comes out, who does a beautiful thing, takes a bite of the apple, throws it, music changes, she rips off her skirt, she fucking pole dances like a maniac. <laughs> I saw a woman come out and do a routine to Mama from Chicago. Great. A girl come out, pole dance with an umbrella, pick up a garden gnome, and then pretend to fall asleep by a stream. <laughs> Which I've heard is a scene from Amelie. I'm not sure. Or it's a Travelocity commercial. No one knows. Yeah. I, I had, <laughs> and so it was so great. There was a girl who came out as a broken doll. Okay. And she did a whole routine as like a doll, like very staccato oh, movements. Cool. But then she continued to be a doll as she left the stage. So she was committed. So she's method. Uh, yeah. One of my favorite things, and this is pretty much the whole, I just encourage anyone to go to these competitions. I, it was incredible. I'm so bummed I missed it. But towards the end of the day, Okay, well, when we were at WrestleMania, yeah. we ran into our friends, Emily Gordon and yeah. Kumail Nanjiani, because Kumail was there promoting, he's in a movie with uh, uh, Batista. Batista. Yeah. So it was like, wait, what are you guys doing here? This is so crazy. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it was our first one. I was like, this is an actual interest for us. <laughs> yeah. We're here because we enjoy it. They fucking show up to the pole dancing competition. They were there? I see them across the way. I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I run over there and I'm like, will you guys quit following me? And they had a friend in the competition. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. So it was a very lovely day. Did they award awards? I, I didn't stay for the awards, okay. but I know they did because their friend uh, won, an, won a couple of awards I saw she posted. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder who judges that. Well, that's the thing is when you do a dance competition, there's like the table in the front with judges. I didn't see any judges. Hmm. I wonder, is it an audience vote? Or, yeah, I don't know. Or is it, are they a plant? I have no idea. But it was fucking awesome. That sounds so fun. these women are, it was so cool because the women were so strong, even if they, like, it wasn't a typical stripper or athlete body. And it was just like, damn, look at you just like hanging on by the strength of one arm and spinning 800 times yeah it's an incredibly impressive like sport it's like an actual sport it Mm -hmm. works muscles in so many different ways and balance it's like you know like same with like silk uh ribbons or whatever that they Mm. use in like carnivals and stuff or circus yeah that that kind of stuff so impressive i could not do it to save my life i couldn't either i've done a couple classes before and i had zero upper body strength oh yeah no that's i i couldn't do that either and my legs would get too tangled. You know who I like to watch do it? Her adventures on it? Nicole, Nicole Byer. Byer. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole Byer. I love it. She is having the most fun doing it. And I just love that they make you have to walk so like sultry and so sexy sex. around the pole. Well, that's the thing is I want to do the funny ones. Yeah. I would like to do it if it's not about like getting in touch with your sexuality and blah, blah, blah. I would blah. go to a strip club if it was solely entertainment day oh strip yeah club, but not that's, sexy day there was a brief moment in time when hannah used to throw her birthdays that she called hannah con yes um was that what it was called i think hannah so. con hannah for sure con. um and she got obsessed with jumbo's clown room out here in la which is uh it's basically it sounds a little bit like that it's kind of a it's a pole dance club no stripping no stripping and people would uh come up with their own original routines yes. and have like different themes i remember 
one of the, my favorite ones was a girl that came out dressed as like a Lakers yeah. basketball player and she was like have, and it was like to LMFAO or something yes, and it was it, yeah and it was just like so fun and energetic it wasn't like inher- it was like inherently sexy because she's a beautiful girl but it wasn't meant to be like look should at me should me and you go back to Jumbos maybe remember we saw Greg from Dharma and Greg there I heard Dharma <laughs> I heard Greg from Dharma and Greg is a regular there yeah you know who else I heard is a regular there who um what's his name is Will from Will and Grace <laughs> Aren't they the same guy? I know, right? <laughs> it's like, so this, so Jumbo's Clown Room is the place where, where celebrity, where dark sitcom men uh, yeah. of the mid 90s go to hang out. Oh, man. I mean, you might see Frasier there next time. Oh, don't even tempt I'm me, bitch. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I have a, an overheard. Yeah, please. Because I'm, I'm light on content this week. Well, this is very quick. It wasn't like a whole conversation. It was actually when we were leaving WrestleMania and we mm-hmm. were in the Sky Lounge. Yes. Which, uh, big ups to Delta, non-spawn. But they oh. always, in the morning, have a f- build your own pho bar. Oh, it's which the greatest is, thing I've ever seen. Which, if you've listened to Grace and I for a while, you know that is our number one go-to hangover food. Oh, So to have that in an airport lounge is brilliant. Yeah. But so I walk over to the coffee machine to make myself a little cappuccino. Uh-huh. And as... As I'm there, I hear an old man voice behind me say, there was mucus coming out of my forehead and my butt. (laughs) Here, talk to your mother. (laughs) I stopped in my milk steaming tracks. I... I just, first of all, I loved how gross it was. That's so gross and so specific. And and that they were... It was he was telling this to their child because then he passed the phone to the mother. Oh my god! I like to think um, that that was that child's stepfather. Yes, <laughs> it's like he doesn't give a fuck and is just gonna lay it all out there. I listened for a little more. They were coming back from a trip from Iceland. That still oh. doesn't explain why there was mucus coming out of his forehead and butt. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever in my thirty-three years heard anyone's symptoms only correlate between forehead and, and butt. butt. <laughs> I was like, is. Are you telling your daughter a dream you had last night? Oh, my God. So that kind of killed me. I wanted to stick Uh, around, but like my cappuccino was ready. So I had to. You have to do what you have to do. But that is um, I'm concerned for that man. I am, too. Um, Uh, Have you do you watch the OA? No, what's that? Okay. (laughs) Oh, it's this show. It's weird as fuck. Like Uh Chip watch. I did one of those things where I saw a billboard for a second season. Okay. And so we're like, and then I, and then I knew my boyfriend had watched the first season. So I was like, I should binge Catch the up. first and then we'll have like another thing. Yeah. Because you know, the ultimate problems in a relationship are what do you want to eat and what should we watch? Yep. A hundred percent. It's always so tough. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'll binge it and then catch up. And I watched three episodes and I couldn't do it. What is the premise? If the premise is too hard to explain. It like, <laughs> it, it there's not time travel but it's like time bending and there's this woman who's blind who is actually from russia and she got adopted it's crazy basically the opening scene is this woman's gone missing Uh they find her and the parents are like that's our daughter that's our daughter and she sees them and she feels their face she's essentially can see now but when she went missing she was blind okay so it's the story of what happened while she was missing got it it's all fucking crazy but it talks about like all this physics of space time continuing and bending over mm-hmm. and like bending on itself and shit I don't get. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I made like give me Bill and Ted. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. That's yep. all I want. You That's know? as much science as I'm into. I can't deal with this. <clears throat> so I'm at a coffee shop last week and I'm working and doing my thing and I hear someone talking about all this shit to my right and mm-hmm. I'm like, these mother OA sounding motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. Like, ugh, I'm so annoyed. And then I finally looked up and it was the woman who created and stars in the OA. <laughs> sitting beside me and i the blonde woman i was like oh this is just how you are okay got it you're just at a coffee shop talking about how time bends in on itself on a monday morning and you're just uh rolling your eyes uncontrollably i I was just so annoyed did you hear they're making a new bill and ted are they yeah they start filming next month i never saw the original this 
Are you shocked? If really? you guys do a drinking game while listening to this Are podcast, you shocked? take a big old sip. I know. I um yeah, I never watch movies. The one time Elliot and I tried to go see uh, a movie, he we realized that he bought tickets to the wrong movie theater, and I was like, "This is a sign we shouldn't watch movies. Wow, <laughs> we shouldn't do it." Bill and Ted is a classic, and I just have a huge <clears throat> like love for Keanu Reeves. Yeah, I mean, I would watch it for sure. Keanu Reeves was just saw, I saw on the cover of GQ this week, and he looks Ooh, good. GQ. Cute. He looks good. I think we talked about this before on this might get, but you know, you know how when people get back end on the movie, mm-hmm. that oh he yeah, gave all his back end for the Matrix to um to the people who did special effects. Yeah, because he was like, you're the people. Who, so which ended up being hundreds of millions of dollars. That's so insane. And going back to the special effects people, I remember years and years ago, um, I came out here for a premiere for a My Damn Channel original series that um oh, I forget the girl's name that was the star of it but she was like a Hollywood actress that had been doing stuff forever mm-hmm. and she made this branded series with Ikea and no it was um it was you know who uh, I'm talking about. Lana 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 Douglas yeah Lana du- yes so you're uh, I forget that I'm, it's on the tip of both of our tongues. Ileana Douglas. Yes, that's it. Yes. And so she has like a ton of friends. No, and those- because hold on. Side note. Yeah. Originally, she had a pilot where it was that it was all in a grocery store. It was old actors oh. that worked in a grocery store. And my stepmom produced it. Oh, shit. And then that didn't go. So she turned it into so a My Damn Channel show. It's yeah. Sorry, inside got, baseball, guys. And then they got a sponsorship by Ikea. So it was all in Ikea. Perfect. And I guess Keanu's in like a half scene or something because like they know each other oh. so we're at the premiere of this i had to come out to like do red carpet interviews for the premiere because i worked for my damn channel and we watched like the first three episodes or something in the movie theater and we come out and i just look over and i just see this dark figure <gasps> oh like full like matrix looking oh my god just like leaning against a wall and it was keanu that oh he was my god. at the premiere and he was just sitting there so casual like so nice like people Chillest. were kind of doing like double takes because he was so subdued and like some people go up and just be like hey man i love you and he'd be like thanks man like it was so normal and casual but i think all of us were just he was clearly the most famous person he's, at this thing he's a ridiculous amount of famous yeah and at that point too this is still like years and years ago that it was it, uh, all of us were kind of dumbfounded and too scared to even approach yeah. him to be like are you is that the wax figure Keanu yes. or is he actually here you know how you can tell he's super famous is because everyone knows how to pronounce his name I know yeah and, they and really no one struggle. else has it Mamrie you'll get there no if, if, if people know how to say my name like randomly <laughs> yeah yeah that's so true that's, that's how you know you're famous oh. uh, when Matrix came out Again, my stepmom, we were so obsessed with it. It was so badass. And you know, it's directed, like it's female directed, actually trans female directed. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, But we were so obsessed with it that we, (laughs) I was out in LA for the summer visiting my folks that we signed up for a Taekwondo class. Oh my God. (laughs) We straight up were like, let's learn some, like we just loved all the, so me and her, me and my stepmom signed up for a Taekwondo class. Oh my God. Killed me. Um, level one, like straight up there every week. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like doing the little <laughs> kicks, a mix of adults and kids. I remember the Taekwondo teacher called me Dawson's Creek because that's the only thing he knew about North Carolina was that Dawson's oh Creek was God. filmed there. So he'd be like, come on, Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Hit harder. And I loved it because it made me feel like a real teenager. Yeah, you felt special. So we were doing it. And finally, it was going to be the day that we have to break a board. Oh, my! wait, you had to do that in like a beginner's class? Yeah, to get your yellow stripe on a white belt. Oh, shit. Yeah. So you really have to focus. But the day before, we went to the beach. <laughs> and I didn't put on any sunblock. Oh, no. So I was a lobster. <laughs> So I was like a burning lobster in my white gi. And like, we do the class. We're going to break the boards at the end. Every punch hurt. So I was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, great grunts. Dawson's Creek. I'm like, I'm dying. So I don't want to do it so bad. Everything hurts. Oh, yeah. I feel like I've been like fully cooked. Oh my and God. And does her board. She gets it. I'm so excited. Everyone's broken theirs. I'm like, I'll go last. You know, <laughs> try to work up the nerve. They're like, S- visualize your uh-huh. hand going through the board. Oh my God. By the time I go to do it, it's like the purple belt class has already filtered oh, in. Oh no, and no, And it's no. all the people who are like badasses no. watching. Oh, that's so cringy. <laughs> I couldn't break through it twice, had to ice my hand, then came back and did it. I was like, you know what? Neo wouldn't give up. But then at that point, your teacher's like, bring the cardboard board. Right. Bring totally. Bring, bring the sheet of pasta. Yeah. So 
I didn't pursue Taekwondo uh, after that. Missed opportunity. But Keanu did inspire me and I did break one board. I wish I would have saved it. I should have framed uh, it and put it in my house. That would have been so great. I know there are, um, I have gone through like, late drunk night deep dives onto montages of men that can't break the boards oh. in their uh, karate or taekwondo classes. It's a pretty entertaining sort of uh, Google search. You know what, though? That is a competition I would go to. Oh, a board breaking? Yeah. And yeah, like, like feats concrete, of strength. Like the cinder blocks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's also a CrossFit situation. Oh. Yeah, I watched a documentary on CrossFit on a plane, and it was actually very, very engaging. Wait, they do feats of strength competitions for CrossFit? They have a CrossFit, like, international competition for, like, oh. the strongest person in the world. And I was, like, texting, maybe with, I was, th- maybe texting with Elliot while I was on the flight about, like, I'm there's nothing left for me to watch I'm now like watching a CrossFit documentary yes you told me this yeah and then I was joking with him being like this is so insane the kind of stuff that they do because it's so abstract like competition stuff like it's you know I thought it was like world's strongest man like they're pulling trucks and like flipping tires Mm -hmm. it's gotten so much more ridiculous than that like what and I made a joke being like they're gonna have to like stand on their hands through a swamp they really do have to walk (laughs) on their hands like for a mud no like a hundred walk thing but they like have to like Michael Buckley could kill that oh my god it was so insane the amount of shit that they had to do they had to do all and like the guy that runs it every year he like gets off on creating these ridiculous scenarios that they don't know what they're gonna get into it's so nuts but I loved it I don't have you ever wanted to do one of those like mutter competitions tough mutters i don't know if it's called tough mu- oh, the- <laughs> mutters <laughs> i think it sounds like called, tutter no, that tutters. fucking cow app no uh, but you know people they do those like feats the of strength competition one? but you just but like you also go through mud yeah i've seen those um how do they get home this is what i want to know <laughs> Is what poor yeah. what poor fucking bastard Uber yeah. or friend has to pick them up when they've been crusty in mud? Full tarps, full tarps. But the I've seen the paint ones where you get covered with like the people throw paint at each other. Well, that's so it's also like the, the, the color the, run or something. Yeah, the color run, which is like I feel like a, uh, it's a, a play based. on the Indian celebration, the Huli competition, or it could be Holi. I could be mispronouncing. I it. don't know any of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> do you have any? I, I'd be down with it. I'd also do one of those runs. I think it, that's the only way to get me to run is if oh. there was a prop scenario. Oh, yeah. They do the ones at night where you just wear a bunch of neon. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah. My brother and his boyfriend have done the naked bike ride. They have? Yes, they have. We found out over Christmas and all of us were like, <gasps> a little like, whoa. And then like, cool. Good job, yeah, guys. You're like, you're two attractive in shape gay men. Yeah, they loved it. But, you know, you have to take breaks for the chafe. I don't know that. Yeah, yeah because your balls would system. get stuck to that bike yeah, if a it's a sunny system. day. Yeah, and they were like, it's the most liberating thing. It's so fun. It's like not people that are good at bike riding. It's like really just an enjoyable thing. I was like, good for you guys. I think they're doing it again soon. Don't tell our audience which city. No, because- no, 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 no. <laughs> you guys, avert your eyes. Uh, uh, oh, so... Mary Beans is in New York this month. Yeah, I have a note in my phone about when Mary came to quote pick up her sunglasses. Okay, <laughs> I love Mary so much. If she ever figures out I have a podcast, just please know that I love you, Mary. But Beans is in New York for a couple weeks uh-huh. uh, with you know my ex boyfriend uh, who I got Beans with originally, yeah. and Beans is going to visit. He's uh, uh, loving it, you yeah. know. Ob- he is in the ex, not Beans is also loving it. Yeah, but so. Mary has been checking in feverishly. So really? why don't you go ahead and start? Oh, well, I was going to say my Mary note was right before we started packing up our perv boxes, which is like a one of the rewards on our Patreon page. Which we had just a whole system of dumb treats spread out around my living room yeah. and kitchen so we could assembly line these gift boxes. And then you told me like Mary, I think is going to stop by because she left her sunglasses here. Last time when she came over to say goodbye to Beans. Yeah. I she th- accidentally left her sunglasses But she didn't She thought Beans was coming back She didn't I think fully process That Beans yes. was going to be Staying in New York For the month mm-hmm. So she came in Like a hurricane Like she came in Full hot Like yeah. stormed in And it's just like Hi Mary I had no echo, Like no idea That I was in that room I doubt she No re- At all She came in like uh, an emergency just happened. Yeah, she came in like Kramer. She yeah. Kramered into She your- came in like a belly scootin' medic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And she came in and you were like, oh, Mary, I, I could tell that you had to like build your nerve up I to break the news. I was preparing for this. Yeah, to let her know that Beans wasn't there because she clearly is scanning the room like Terminator to find yeah. where the Beans <laughs> is. <laughs> yes. And then you tell her and you give her her glasses and that's when I took in what she was actually wearing when she came <laughs> She's wearing a full beans face on her t-shirt. 
as she's scanning this room for beans. I was like, and then I had to bite my fucking lip. I so I did about this. So I didn't go, what you got on that shirt, Mary? Because it looked like just a brown, like oversized yes. t-shirt that she's wearing. And then I like, and then like you, a magic Monet, eye. you get in there. <laughs> I was like, oh, she's, uh. gonna, she's fully out on a weekday in the afternoon wearing a shirt that's just trotting a screen around printed picture of my dog uh, and then when she found out that beans wasn't there she it left in a huff it was tough <laughs> i got a text that goes why does he get visitation rights <laughs> i was like okay everyone calm uh, down like, and, everyone calm down i know in that moment i started to uh i have you know obviously i'm enamored and entertained by mary but then the slight twinge of if you go missing i know the prime suspect <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love her so much. I got, well, this morning I've already, I got a text that was just, how's beans? <laughs> um, I'm like, uh, you know, as far as I know, doing great. Yeah, here's some pics. Still not I, physically here's in some Los Angeles. pictures I was sent. Yeah. So I sent her three pictures that I've gotten of beans over the past week. Mm -hmm. And then like an hour later, I get an email from Mary that just goes, beans has another fan. And then the body <gasps> of the email is, I keep my friend Martha in Boston <laughs> updated on beans. <laughs> I sent her this pic you just sent me and she just printed it out and placed it on her fridge. Oh so fans. And it was one of the pictures I just sent her an hour earlier. Oh, my God. They really I mean, if you need people to run the Beans Heart fan club or her Instagram page, it's incredible you have to like volunteers, I think. I mean, I would so much rather have it this way Ugh. than someone who walks your dogs and you're like. Do, are you a sociopath? Do you care about right. my dogs at all? Oh, yeah. Instead, I just get like the number one fan for she, this tiny beast. Oh, I love it. Meanwhile, right before we started this, I got a text from my mom uh -huh. to me and my brothers that just goes, it's that time of year, my lovelies. Jesus Christ, superstar. Mic drop. And then just... <laughs> And just send us a link to Jesus Christ Superstar, the whole recorded full album, the original London concept recording. Wait, why did your mom mic drop? I don't know. I have, and she spelled Mike M I K E. <laughs> Is it about your brother in law, Mike? No. I Not brother in law, half brother. I think it must be the anniversary of the recording of Jesus Christ Superstar. There's no real oh. context. When did Jesus, well, because it's Easter time and the only thing we do religious or that even looks religious yeah. is enjoy jesus christ superstar yeah and the oh god this is kind of sad i didn't respond to her text oh, before ahead. this no oh, no no it's not don't sad. bring us down okay. no, no no it's just that she sent us me and my brothers a link to social media loves golden retrievers cone of shame costumes so uh we gotta really respond yeah you gotta respond <laughs> and just uh i looked it up jesus christ superstar was in 1970 so mm -hmm. next year will be the 40th anniversary <laughs> and i bet there will be a big old tour uh, oh okay we got to put feelers out now three years ago uh grace and hannah and i happened to be in iceland we did not have mucus come out of our forehead or butt no not unlike that, that poor man we didn't check in with hannah afterwards yeah. but the two of us did not i know i'm like <laughs> was that a blue lagoon symptom uh but while we were in reykjavik it was over easter and there was a Jesus Christ Superstar production happening oh. and we went and watched it and it was great. We've you've probably heard this story before. Jesus left his shirt on. He had he well, had a couple extra LBs on him. While he's being crucified, he was wearing a Hanes t shirt the whole time. With like a <laughs> probably if we could have zoomed in a mustard stain yeah, and from was, lunch earlier. And it was a cool concept because they had like a full choir on stage the whole time. Everyone had um wired mics yes uh, and then there were no props so it was kind of like visually cool until the only prop that was used was like a fiji water bottle that yes. they used to throw water <laughs> they on threw them. water on them with fiji water with i was like, like an wow. actual plastic water bottle and i was like okay this seems like a little bit of a weird choice yeah it was a pared down very like since we're in iceland it was a very yeah. like nordic like i don't know just like they're yeah yeah, they're yeah. Not, it's not norway we're not in no. norwegian but um anyway that was so fun. We I forgot about Easter. Out. What's your favorite Easter candy? Oh, I love those. I don't know what they're called. They're like the chocolate eggs. Yes. that have like the chalky like yes. milk chocolate on the outside. Yes. It's just the Cadbury mini eggs. Is that what they're called? Yes. <laughs> those are my favorite too. They have they're, the best shell. I love them. They have like, yeah, it's like not chalky. It's like a matte finish on the outside. They're the best. And I never see them any other time of year and they are fantastic. I don't know if I've told this story before uh -oh. on the podcast. Please. So please stop me if I have. Okay. I know I told Chip recently. Okay. 
I loved Easter baskets. We okay. usually got, you know, like candy and like one. We each got like one VHS. Well, that makes sense that you now love putting together gift baskets of things. Love it. Yeah. I mean, my mom would do a great job. I remember one year I got the Babysitter's Club, the movie, and oh. she was over like for the next <laughs> month. That's all I did. But uh, great candy. But my mom would always like mix in some fun, you know, like German candies or like, you know, like candies that we don't normally get here. You know, I grew up with exchange students. Cultural. uh, Yeah. So I was like all down with uh, different candies we didn't get. One time I got this candy that was like it looked like a like an egg Uh and it was filled with chocolate, like basically like a Cadbury, one of those, but big. So I'm like, ooh, this is so exciting. So I'm eating it and I'm like, this is definitely from Germany. Like it's stale. It's been shipped over. (laughs) I like finally like. A week later, I like get through this big chocolate egg and everything. And I finally say, like, I, I made it through. Like, yeah. that was not my favorite. Don't put it in there next year. <laughs> You're to giving which, your mom constructive like, criticism. Let's, let's ixnay the, the real looking egg. <laughs> this basket was an eight out of ten. We can yes. do better next year. I'm like this. It was the the like shell was flavorless. It wasn't good. Whatever. <laughs> you just chopped to judging which, her. <laughs> yes. I, would, I gurna shellied her. To which I learned that was a real eggshell. <laughs> Wait, what? That was like an artistic thing where they like take a pin, they take a pin, you they blow like a, out all the egg. You ate they, like a Faberge egg? They, it was an actual eggshell. I ate it like I was a wolf. So you're just supposed to peel it and, and they fill it with chocolate. So the whole idea is like, it's a real eggshell, but it's filled with so chocolate. You so you peel it like a boiled egg. I just spent a week eating a real eggshell. <laughs> I was like, that tasted terrible. It hurt going down. I was a garbage disposal. I was a compost monster. Oh my God. That's And I was so like, funny. it was a real shell, you say? Oh. I'm kidding. Of course they didn't eat that. <laughs> yeah, this has been a long joke. Uh, so uh, wow. kids, watch out. If you have an egg. Be careful. First of all, why are you listening to this podcast? Second, yeah. if you get one that looks like a real egg, maybe read a label. Read a label. And if it's in German, we got Google Translate these days. So you don't become a compost child. Do yourself a favor. Cool. Well, yeah, I ended that on a weird note. I lo- no, you ended it on a cautionary tale. <laughs> cautionary tale. Uh, this is so much fun, guys. We yeah. currently don't have any live date schedule. We're trying to get some some going but we always have our patreon patreon.com slash this might get weird it has been so fun lately we're yep. going to be posting a whole bunch of stuff yes 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 i am committed to getting more in that um on that site around yeah. that site uh, get my my grubby hands all over the patreon yeah. page if you're a patreon of any level prepare to be uh, annoyed by how many notifications you get that there's a new post yeah yeah also we still have to brainstorm where we put this bench where? The, the promo bench? Yes, promo bench. We have to do it's, that. It's in the back of our brains. We just didn't want to like, you know, rush into it. It's not no. that we forgot about it at all. <laughs> let's let's brainstorm. Let's try to get a bench up in May. Yeah, okay. Uh, a benchmark of our podcast. <gasps> I love that. Social oh. accountability. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, you guys. Have a fun day. We'll see you next week. May. May.